How do you? All right. Morning. It's uh, rolls reversed today. I'm holding the camera. Ex Welcome to this week's video. Excuse the hat. It's. Uh, I know it's very befitting me, but uh, yeah. Summer's arrived. A little bit sunny, and the old forehead is a little bit follically challenged. So can't afford some then. Makes me a grumpy man. So, what are we talking about today? So this week's video is a bit different. We're going to give you a bit of information about our experience of having our boat safety examination. A very pleasant experience it has been too. Really? It might have been for you. <laughs> for Alan. <laughs> it wasn't for me. I don't think he were for me either. But it was our first one and uh, it's been a little bit interesting. The stress levels were very high. Yeah, I'll go with that. I haven't been a happy chappy, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of an important thing when you're playing with gas. So boat safety certificate has to be done every four years. It's a bit like an MOT for a car. Yeah. Um, so it's an annual exam. And it looks at things like your gas, your fuel, your oil, your fuel pump, your fuel thrusters, ovens, it's um, yeah, it's uh, a very in-depth. I will put a link below, you can go on to the boat safety website and download the handbook which from memory was just under 200 pages long. Yeah, and it is say 200 pages long, it's advisories for examiners and you as to what is needed to be checked on. There's advisories, there's guidance marks, there's various different bits and pieces. But don't forget that although the examiners have to sit an exam for it, they have all their own little bits that they turn around down. Because it's a it's a advice shop really isn't it? Yeah and if you have an examiner that isn't poorly registered then you need to have a gas bubble for them to test there's no gas leaks in the system. Which Hence, was the main headache for you, was getting yeah. that test fitted and working, wasn't it? And that's why happy chappy, not. But actually, off the back of that, we found our oven had a gas leak. So, from a safety point of view, really, it would be advisable for everyone to have one, because if you haven't got one, you're not going to know if you've got a gas leak, necessarily. Yeah. And... I fitted it and it, I kept getting bubbles and... I will put a bit of video in in a minute of part of the fitting process so you can see it as well. And I kept getting bubbles and kept getting bubbles and kept tightening my nuts on my olives and, and not being rude before you go there. Naughty, naughty. Yeah. Um, so we've turned around and like, I, I spent about four days playing with that gas, didn't it I? Is. And it wasn't a case of the work that I'd done. Um, I'd over tightened, I'd bent a couple of bits of pipe, so I've had to replace them and tidy it up and clip it and and then put um, do other bits to it. And even on the day of the, the actual examination or test, whatever you want to call it, um, I was there trying to hide the bubbles or get rid of the bubbles. I can't say hide bubbles, they appear anyway. But, um, yeah, solve it. The and, other uh, issue, wasn't it, was getting availability of 10 mil copper pipe because it's not widely used, particularly in this area. Well, it so isn't we so much find getting the... a supplier, so I will put the link for that below as well. It wasn't so much getting the pipe. We could have bought well, like we a bought huge meters, coil we of 50, 50 metres. We wanted a metre. Yeah, and it was finding somebody that was willing to cut. And there was a place that was willing to cut in Warwick, wasn't there? Mm and then sell the remainder on, but... but yeah, I'll put a link below yeah. because it was over near Howes Owen that we got it in the end. So yeah. I'll put a link below, so if you're in this area and you do need shorter lengths of it, that is somewhere that you can approach to get some. I actually found it on eBay, but in the end we went and picked it up from the workshop. We did, because that's the beauty of having the van. So, 
what else? So you had three bits really that it failed on, didn't you? Yeah, we failed on the gas bubbles, which with the help of Alan and some of the stuff that he turned around and had, um, like he proved the fact that what I'd done wasn't that bad. Um, uh, I Come failed on. It. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We had conduit that was missing to protect the casing of the wires from rubbing. I had some clips that I'd missed. Um, 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 so the conduit wire was um, on the wires for the batteries, wasn't it? Yeah. From the battery, starter battery to the engine, and then. Um, that needed securing better, didn't it? Yeah. Did. So that was the conduit. We turned around and had a few P clips to secure the electric cable. We had the bubbles on the, the uh, oven as we turned around and found out in the end. And, and the sign oh, for the, the stop cock. Sorry? For the diesel. Diesel. What about diesel? Stop cock for diesel. And the sign for the stop cock on the diesel. And I didn't have one from the last BSS, so obviously it's been an oversight. Um, so other than that, we haven't done too bad really. Uh, first one since we bought the boat four years ago, or just short of four years ago. Um, and yes, stress levels went through the roof, but it's not Hopefully all that. So today, we're fitting a Dell uh, gas bubble so that BSS can turn around and do their bubble gas test check um, yeah it's been a bit of fun it's uh, cost us a, I think it was £60 for the actual bubble test there um, which is just basically you push the button in the direct flow that like the gas is going and you should get or shouldn't get bubbles at the bottom. Um, one to fit because um, our gas gas test um, our BSS isn't gas registered safety. Um, so it's for him to turn around and do his checks. Probably makes it easier for even gas gas registered ones too. Um, but that's what the man wants. So that's what the man's getting. Um, we had a bit of fun last night in our gas cupboard. Um, I chopped the pipe. I don't know whether you can see. Um, where are we? I chopped the pipe. Um, where are we? Let's try and get it into a different, a decent place. And then you can see what I'm doing. So I chopped the pipe last night to find out it wasn't half inch pipe. Um, although we had um, what I thought was half, half inch pipe uh, reducers. There you go. And as it happens, the bloke sold me 15 mil. Um, we've got a, a meter of copper pipe, which we've started turning around and using. Um, I've been for a 10 mile bike ride this morning to get copper pipe. Uh, no, not copper pipe. 12 mil to 10 mil reducer and I find that the pipe is the old three three quarter fit so I've had to uh, rub it down so it'll fit uh, that one I'm gonna have to do but as you can see where the gas goes back into see there into the pipe fitting we've had to rub no we haven't we've had to rub down here to turn around and fit your um, 12 mil and then your to 10 10 mil pipe with a 10 mil um, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing yeah so there you go the old pipe rubbed down to fit the 12 mil to 10 mil socket just cut some pipe and then I've got a right angled um, fitting which I'm gonna fit the the bubble tester in in that way at a height where it's protected by the shelf here um, and then once we've got the whole system fitted 
we'll have to put blocks in behind all the joins, attach the blocks um, to the wall and then attach the pipe to the blocks. Um, just so we'll every join until we match back down at the old pipe down there. It's got to be in a bit of work. <sighs> Bring it on. That's all. <laughs> just another day at work. It's a beautiful day today and there's not an awful lot to see because my arms are going to get in the way in a minute. So cleaning the ends where the ollies go in. So we have, I don't know whether you can see them, we have the ollie there which will get pushed into the fitting. We have the wall there, there's the nut there, sorry, which will allow us to turn around and tighten it all up. So, let's see how we get on. Because I've got a couple of sockets, corners to do, being a little bit cheeky, doing it off pipe, to make it easier for me. So. And the gas bubble tester comes with a, a glass piece, a piece of glass in the bottom that you put um, and that's why I took the glass out and the problem doing trying to do it in front of a, a camera is the fact that it always goes wrong doesn't it right so that should now go on there, like so. Um, right, so I'm going to cut this short while I cut some bits off because I've got to work out the length of what I need for my corners. One of the tasks in the engine bay is to strap the battery down securely. And so we've removed batteries and moved them around with fitting the solar and the lithium batteries. So all the battery pack was originally sat there on that area. And now we've just got the starter battery in there. So Paul's gonna secure that down. One of the criteria for the boat safety certificate. Yeah, so we need to fasten it. So you did secure it, didn't you, for the safety certificate, yep. but the inspector wasn't happy with it. When, when we got the boat, we had four big laser batteries and that starter battery, and it was secured by a ratchet strap. Now, there's loads of statements about it, and with the ratchet strap round the, round the sides, yeah, so it did this bit, with having the trays, four years ago, it was adequate. The, the tester, some different testers have particular things that they are part A prefer. Well, it's interpretation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, interpretation. Um, I don't know the full ins and outs, so depending who you get to do it depends on what they'll, they'll stipulate on. Um, whether it's a specialism, whether it's a, just a particular interpretation, don't know which because it's only our first one. But we've been told the ratchet strap and the cages aren't good enough. We have to turn around to secure it so it doesn't move forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, or up and down. So, um, we've got rid of the ratchet strap. Um, and I've been told that if I put some timber down the side to secure it from moving, and it's only good, there's an allow, allowance of 10 mil I think it was, um, but we'll secure it so we can get in and out of it. Um, and then I've been told I can get away with putting, because it can't move upwards and downwards. So I've been advised that if I get a piece of timber there and then wedge it upwards so it can't go upwards, and I suppose it's for going out on the wash and so on tidal bounce stuff around. and it doesn't bounce about and, and move. So, do what I'd, an examiner asks, and like I say, different ones have different preferences. Um, so don't pull me on the fact that like, yes, I'm using a piece of timber and wedging it in. 
because um, that's the requirement. So that's that. And then I've been told that I need to protect the sleeve on, on all the cables. So we've been down to Wix, bought a five meter length uh, piece of conduit, and then we'll just put, slice up the edge and then wrap it round and put a zip tie on it just to hold it in place so that way if the cable moves anyway over any of the, the metal work it doesn't wear because these these uh, cages for the old batteries are going to stay in place um so there's potential wearing which once you've worn it out metal and metal don't go together and it shorts things out so that's one of the jobs and then we've also got our fuel cot below which is is basically uh, you need to advise where your shut off caps are so somewhere above and what we're going to do is we're going to use the just about there i'm going to drill two holes in either bolt it or screw it and then like we can either access it from the engine hatch where i am or into the weed hatch as well um which attach moving you can just see the edge of where I get down to for the weed hatch. But that's the intention of putting that there and that'll be a bolt or whatever, advertising for next door. So that's the job. So we've got to secure the battery, cover the cable, oh, move my finger, and then put this sign. So that's gonna be a couple of drill holes and either a bolt or a screw, depending what we've got. We won't protrude and cut hands when we go into the actual cabinet. So there you go, we're through the bridge. We hope you find that helpful in some way. If you're having your boat safety certificate, I'll try not to crash. So then look at the camera, I'll look at where I'm going. Um, yeah, so join us next week. Yeah, like I say, links are below if you're coming up to having yours done. Got any more specific questions by all means pop them in the comments below if we can't answer them we'll find someone that can for you and hopefully it will be still as sunny as this come next week then so next week's video we'll see us on the Russell canal which was the only bit of the bcn that we didn't manage to do last year because it was closed and brown hills festival which was the first time we've done brown hills festival and there was a bath in the canal so do have a look next week to see what that's all about. There you go, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, yeah there was, so wasn't there? you can do your fish about the bell. Right, so it's, <laughs> as time goes by, push the button, ring the bell, it's free to you, your friends, to Tash, to me, and the sunshine, because that comes free too. Enjoy yourselves, we'll see you next week, and say tra Tash. Yeah, have a good week, bye. Tra Tash. <laughs>